the main event slob news for today. This one's about Scott the Waz. Scott the Waz, one of the more popular fresh blood, young blood of, of YouTube game reviews. Um, I know he's uh, he has been coined as, especially after a lot of people fell out of love with JonTron, they consider Scott the Waz to be somewhat of a JonTron successor. He's incredibly young. Like we, EJ yeah. and I were both struck by in, in the video we're about to talk about. He's like, hey, guys, I'm 26 now. I'm getting older. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. I've uh, been doing these episodes every single week. May have been possible in like my early 20s. Now I'm 26. And uh, I, I I feel like I need to change things. Uh, he's been in my feed. I've never clicked on any of his videos. I assumed he was older because he always talks about retro games. Right. And I thought he was just like some mysterious, like youthful elf that, you know, happens every once in a while. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I, I, you were going to talk about this video on the podcast. So I, I watched his, his, his update list chat video. And then, yeah, when he, he mentions he's 26, I'm like, Oh my, he's been making videos for years though. Yeah. <laughs> And, I, and and I always assumed he was kind of a success, like the Zoomer successor to John Tron, a peanut butter gamer kind of style video. Yeah. And he's done a really, really good job of carving out his own things. So like why he scratches that itch for people, but he's kind of not. I don't know. I feel like in many and this will be a theme, I suppose. But in many ways, it feels like he has learned the lessons of other failed YouTubers before him. He does really in-depth, comedic, highly edited, very good production value for the most part reviews of, of mostly Nintendo. I, it seems to me like it's like 80% Nintendo, but he has a lot of really good topics too. He'll do like um, video games that you find at a dollar store. What was on sale, you know, for holidays, 2015. And what I learned from this video was that at the height of his popularity for the, the first few years of his popularity. So call it um, whatever, like 2018 to 2021. He, uh, he was putting out like 50, full blown Scott Lawaz videos per year. I mean, these things range EJ from like 20 minutes to an hour <laughs> and he was doing them weekly. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. That's I mean, nuts. it was, it's insane. Um, and he was, he was capturing all the game footage himself. He wasn't going to Nintendo complete and stealing it. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, and, and, and in the video he was like, um, Hey, I, I was 21 and I had nothing else to do. <laughs> I got, I was sitting in my room and I could, I could edit on a computer for 18 hours a day, you know, back in like 2017, 2018, 2019, I did like 50 episodes in one year, which is crazy to think about. And he just, yeah, he just, he grinded it. He's actually appeared on the Cinemaster podcast before. And he's, he's been like in the, I think he's been on rental reviews maybe. But yeah, he crosses over those those guys a little bit. Well, it, it, I, I did the math and I was like, he was four when the GameCube came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's crazy. Like the Nintendo 64 came out before he was born. Um, and, and it is funny. Like that's the one kind of inauthentic thing about the channel to me is he, he talks about GBA, GameCube. He talks about this stuff like um, like he was there. Like, like we were all so excited to see what GameCube was going to come up with for the new Zelda. And then when we <laughs> PlayStation, Sega Saturn and the Nintendo 64, we got the true vision of what the future of gaming was going to be. Jesus Christ. Yeah, as if he was fucking there. He's four. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, he's just getting potty trained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be like if Gloria was like, like and then we got Wind Waker. <laughs> the hell would you know about this? Um... <laughs> That reminds me of uh, when I was in like middle school, I had some friends who were really into the Beatles and um, older people kind of couldn't wrap their heads around it. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it is like there was Beatlemania and sh wouldn't you have had to have been there kind of uh, apparently not, which is good. So he made a big video saying, hey, I'd like to talk about why there were like 10 Scott Lawaz videos this year instead of, you know, one one a week. And I want to talk about why my two, my other two channels have so much content on them. So he's got three channels total. There's just Scott Lawaz. That's his big produced shows. There's Scott's snippets, which is a clips channel. And some of them are kind of funny that it'll be like a comp, like he's put together compilations of compilations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're not a, they're not low effort in other words. And then there's Scott's stash, which He's talking like this is like the trash channel. This is like the, oh, you know, I just take my phone and film some collectibles and talk about them unscripted. No, no, no. 
these are fucking edited, man. This is, it reminds me a lot of us where it's like, okay, yeah. we really enjoy doing the podcast channel and the clips are much easier, but then the clips turn into like its own highly developed thing. We have the source of uh, movies and clips of, <laughs> yeah. of our own. And it suddenly everything has edit, to be produced. Edit for, edit for timing. and <laughs> Yeah, the rhythm has to be right. Uh, if we talk over each other, mute one of the people, you know. You know he, and he's talking to the camera all tired, like he, like... <laughs> He's all blown out, <laughs> like like as if he finally got burned out and he didn't make any content this year. But like, if you look, it's mountains of content. Yeah, the, um, the sure microphone is is like casually by his mouth. He's he's barely opening his mouth. It's like a little part part of his mouth is opening. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, I didn't make any content. I suppose he made plenty of content, but he's yeah, he's like you know I'm getting I'm getting to that part of my life where I don't want to be editing nonstop. And so what I've done is um. Without you knowing, I have trained my friends who have been appearing on the channel in our sketches and stuff. Um, I've trained them to edit the videos. Yeah, I trained Sam and Justin, and Dominic and Eric how to edit. Uh, so that way, uh, it does very much feel like regular uh, Scott the Waz and Scott Stash editing. Uh, and it's from people you might know. And the reason I'm telling you after the fact is so that if I had announced it prior you all would have been like, oh, this episode sucks because Scott didn't edit it. And so, yeah, this mm. means Scott has been editing all, which is crazy. Like, the guy has millions of subs, and yeah. it's a super popular channel. The idea that he has been doing all of this work up until this point is, I think it's, like, basically unheard of. Um, yeah. And also, like, I think it's a smart move to, like, announce it after, too, because, yeah. like, say you train these people and it didn't work out. Like, what's what would be the point of even announcing Yeah, that it, sucks. You know? And, and and something I, I appreciated that he said, he was like, uh, it's not, you know, what's cool about the reason he likes making these Scott stash, Scott's stash videos so much is because it's nice to make content that doesn't have a quality bar to reach. So like this, okay. this happens with YouTube is you psych yourself out where you're, you're like, okay, well, because my content has been here, um, uh, I'm not saying like, oh, it's like excellent, but I'm saying like, um, a uh, high effort, let's say, because the effort level has been here, then that's the standard. And I can't drop below the standard. It's why, like, in WWE, everybody was mad at McFoley for a while for falling off of a cage because they're like, well, there it is. Now the new standard is you got to fall off a cage. <laughs> and, right, right. Um, and so, yeah, he's like, I just like that, like, there's no expectations for what this channel has to be. Now, he, he yeah. I think, has risen the bar almost immediately by making all the content pretty good. But um, uh, I, I get that for sure. And it, it just fascinates me that, like, there's this YouTube cycle that whether you you have millions of subs like him or you have thousands like us or what, I think almost everybody who does the YouTube thing on a schedule eventually feels this where they, they go on for a year or two years with a certain kind of content. And then they're like, should I just keep going forever catering to the same group of people? Or should I, what should I, how do I pivot from this? Cause it's not, yeah. it's, it's, it's just not like network television or, or traditional television where, you get contracted for seasons and then you don't get contracted for seasons. You just, it's all, it's up to you. You know, do you want to keep a, an unsuccessful show going? You could, you know, you could, Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. Or do you want to burn yourself out in the same content? Do you want right. to, do you want to risk being stale by just doing the same notes over and over again? And he mentioned that like he decided to try to change things up in 2022 because it wasn't really working for him anymore. And he, he said like, it actually was really hard to, to change it in 2022 is like, getting off, of, you know, getting off of a hamster wheel, you know, where your, your mm. legs still know the you're like, wait, no, I got to do the thing. I feel like my brain was very much wired to doing this weekly. So adapting to not having a deadline and not forcing myself to a schedule. It was really, really hard for me to figure out, like, like, what am I doing? How do I do this? And he took a lot of pride in doing the whole thing. He said that one of the ways that he um, talked himself out of the, I got to do it all thing. It's like, well, I didn't make the games. <laughs> I, I, didn't, yeah. <laughs> I didn't invent the Nintendo. People are like, yeah, don't shit on James. Well, he shitting on the games. <laughs> like the guy shits literally shits on games. This whole video reminded me of like the anti James Rolfe, because it would be like, if James was like, Hey, Kyle and Bootsy are going to be editing videos now. <laughs> like it's the same people you're familiar with. And we're bringing them in. Or even and, uh, better, Ma like Mike and Booty and Kyle have been editing videos. And these guys yeah. have been such a help to me. And this is how we're going to get you more content. Something needs to change. And I think it's that you get help.
I, like I almost wonder if he saw the problem because they, you know he's been on in that circle. If he saw the problems, he's like, hey, I gotta make sure I. And it seems like he has a lot of emotional and thoughtful intelligence that he's able to formulate this and 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 convey it and recognize the problems and recognize in, in himself and it convey it to his audience. So it's it's I I've, I thought it was a really fascinating video because of that. Yeah, I thought so too. And yeah, and I, I think we all are faced with the question of like, so what's the like what's the pressure to keep up the quantity and keep up the high intensity? Is it like this I'll grow even more or <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah. uh and, and after you have a backlog, like he does, I'm sure that there's a lot of passive income. So it's like, do I have to keep up like the income? Is that what it's about? I mean, once you start paying people, then actually there is pressure to keep up an income. Um, cause right. now you actually have people relying on that income besides yourself. I mean, there's gotta be a lot of comfort to be taken in like, yeah, even though a lot of money's coming into this and I predict, by the way, I did just some quick analysis. He doesn't have a Patreon as far as I could tell. And, he has three channels. All of them perform pretty well, um, but they're not 15 years old. And, you know, so I think he's making somewhere between 600,000 and $800,000 a year. And yeah, like if you're 26 and you're looking to like retire early in life and you know, you're not going to be able to talk about Wii U forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, I could definitely see like, maybe I do grind until I'm 35 and I just keep all the income myself and, you know, and my wife or my girlfriend or he's got a girlfriend. He said, he's got slubs and he's paying the slubs. Who the fuck are they? We're, we're coming up on our, we do all of our Christmas content. And it's the last couple of years, uh, the, the Christmas content always comes out great. And I love making it. And we got lots of it. Uh, the, yeah. the Christmas playlist on Red Cow Entertainment has 80 videos. <laughs> um, <laughs> we love Christmas. We love Halloween. <laughs> we love it. The war on Christmas content. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so, but every year there's still, you know, for me, all it takes is like five or six people to be like, I can't. Who else is excited to see <laughs> how many hours Frankie's going to edit this year? <laughs> like, oh my god! Because um, I, I remember last year and the year before too, but last year especially, I was just like, I felt like I was changed to the computer. Like mm. I, I and, you know, Nina would be like, you know, want to watch this Christmas movie? And I was like, yeah. Can I get in like an hour of editing though? You know, it's it's brutal after a while, especially when your mm. kid's six. You know, she's not going to be six. Mm -hmm. For, for long and then she'll be seven and um oh yeah so i wanted to i was like i i, I we got to pare it down a little bit i got to be able to get through this um at, at some reasonable clip and uh, uh matt who works on our channel he was like uh, uh hey i wanted i wanted to do the lighting ceremony want to go to santa's village want to go to i was like oh man i can't i can't I'm, and and he he kind of eventually was like maybe i could edit something and i was like Okay. You know, and, and Scott's video inspired me a little bit because he, he trained his buddies to, he was keeping it in the family. And I was like, well, that would, be, wouldn't that be interesting if, if Matt, like, cause, cause this Red Count Entertainment channel, I love, I love it. And, and there's fans of it and stuff, but it's not growing. And, um, you know, if you look mm -hmm. at the stats compared to the podcast channel, it's, it's, it's disgraceful. Um, yeah. I mean, granted it, it's up 15% from last year, just because of the juice from this podcast channel. But, yeah. um, but if, if so, then you end up in a situation where like, there's no reason to keep the intensity up. But nobody wants to see these shows die. We still have a lot of people saying, "Where's the next Peter Smith? Where's the next R.I.P.? Whatever." I was like, "Wouldn't it be <laughs> nice if like I could just shoot a bunch of stuff and Matt could edit it all, right? That would that would we could keep these things going forever." Matt's the kind of guy who's got some time on his hands. So I, I talked to him, and it became kind of obvious that he was like, "Well, I kind of meant like, can I edit the stuff that like I want to make on the channel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I I really want to go to this Christmas light thing, so I'll edit the Christmas light thing." And so I was like, "Maybe John, you know, he's he's worried about being obsolete." And I I, I kind of wrote him a long thing, being like, "Could you edit everything from now on?" <laughs> and uh, and he said he was like, "Sure, I can help some." Yeah. No. And I was like, well, it, it, you know, I, I could use a help all. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get out of the, the Red Cow Entertainment business if I can. Um, and he's actually, you know, he's like a co-owner of the company. So again, there wouldn't be like a, then I started, I was, I was like, well, what would we even pay? Right. Cause we don't make that much like this year we might make $18,000. And again, mm -hmm. most the vast majority of that is from this channel. The average pod clip makes it between 30 and $50 lifetime normally. You know, of course, there's some mm -hmm. cinemassacre ones that are more evergreen than that. 
but the thing is we put out 12 to 15 of them a month. So they're much bigger earners just in terms of quantity. Um, so that makes like five to 700 and and the channel makes five to $700 monthly in AdSense. And we do have a Patreon that's like at like 850 or something around there. But then the red cow entertainment videos make between like $12 and $40. So they're, they skew a little lower per video. Like even like a highly produced like box mac or something, it makes less than yeah. the average clip. Just one video, like just comparing video to video on average, and we only put two to three of them out a month. Which is a way, it's a way lower yield. Yeah. This, this is where YouTube just simply doesn't reward high effort content. It just doesn't. Um, yeah, it, it it rewards. It's increasingly rewarding Scott's stash over Scott's the loss. Scott the loss. Precisely. <laughs> I, and there, there, we all know. Like we've been talking about algorithm goblins for a while, but like I'm seeing it get lazier, man. I'm seeing just like it's a guy on a mic. You don't even see him. He's just scrolling websites that are screen grabbed. He is blabbing the most uninsightful bullshit <laughs> ever. Mm-hmm. And he's just, re- but he, but he has a catchy thumbnail and a controversial headline and he just soaks it up. That's what YouTube is, is inspiring that kind of content. The algorithm doesn't reward that high effort, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I thought, well, what would I pay? Right. Like, and I'm like, well, I guess for Matt, you know, Matt's the kind of guy you'd have to pay. You wouldn't have to pay John because he's part of the company, yeah. but Matt, yes. you know, you, you put him on the payroll and I was like, I, I, it would exceed the the value of a of an individual video, but I, I it would probably be worth it just to keep the thing alive, um, mm-hmm. as a loss leader. I was like, I get, I would pay fifty dollars a video for him to edit box max and stuff, but it, that's just so cheap, you know. If Flower Gothic yeah, had anything to say about it, um, yes, absolutely. But that's what it that's that's what it's worth, unfortunately. Uh, um, without taking a big chunk out of like the enterprise here. And then for the clips, because they're higher quantity, they're lower effort. I think $20 a clip, which again, it just sounds like peanuts. So I think after the new year, we'll see whether or not we, uh, we take a page out of, uh, Scott, the book here, Jay from OSW. He, he messaged me at length and he, 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 he sternly told me I need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, you, he's like, enough's enough, man. He's like, you're going to, you're going to love the efficiency. Like you gotta, you can't like live your life editing. You got to fi- mm. figure out some people who can help you. Um, and he's like, you got to yeah. relax your standards. And, but I, I gotta tell you, like, I, I, I think I'm at a point where I'm like, all right, I, I can relax my standards a little. Um, mm-hmm. maybe. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll, that'll be our new new year's resolution. Relax all of our standards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.